Hi, everybody. Okay, I'm Jay Sears. I'm the SVP of Marketplace Development at uh, the Rubicon Project. And I'm gonna talk about uh, six questions for the media owner around automation. So um, if you are a media owner, can the media owners raise their hand? Okay, so these are good questions to ask your own organization to see if you're properly prepared uh, for um, the, the unstoppable march of automation and to be prepared in a very positive and proactive way. And if you're um, on the ad agency or advertiser side, uh, I think these are good questions for you to ask your trading partners, the media owners that you do work with, um, to see if they're ready to embrace this, um, this new wave of, uh, of automation. Okay, so we're gonna go through these six and then if you guys wanna do questions and answers, um, terrific. All right, so just very quickly about the Rubicon project. We are headquartered in Los Angeles, California. Uh, we have operations across the world, uh, across EMEA, across APAC, and across the United States. Uh, we are an advertising automation platform. So when you've heard about real-time bidding and programmatic, in direct order automation. We have over 500 media owners around the world, okay? So this would be uh, companies like News Corp, companies like Viacom, uh, companies like The Guardian and FT. Um, and, um, and they use this system to manage trading uh, with agency trading desks, with DSPs, and those companies connect here to do this, this automated trading as well. In fact, there are over 100,000 advertiser brands uh, that trade on our platform every single day. So it's very likely um, if you represent a brand or you're an agency and you have a client uh, that we see activity from you uh, in digital advertising and digital display and mobile, which is where we're active today, um, every single day. Okay. So uh, enough about Rubicon Project. If you have other questions, we'll cover that um, at the end. So uh, if you're a media owner or if you're dealing with media owners, what are six questions that uh, you should be asking to see if uh, everybody's kind of prepared for the day? Um, so it used to be uh, when media owners negotiated uh, trading agreements with their agencies, they really only talked about unique access to media, that the agency wanted to turn around and tell its advertiser about access it had to a piece of media that maybe others didn't have. Um, but the second piece that now has become equally important uh, is unique data, uh, first party data. So what does that media owner, so what does a Viacom or a News Corp or a Financial Times know about its customer um, that maybe through a deployment of a DMP, a data management platform that has been attached to a, 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 a marketplace like Rubicon Projects that it can leverage uh, on behalf of the advertiser. And if you go back uh, a couple years ago um, in the sphere of automation, when we were just talking about the auction market, so just talking about the remnant market, performance-based advertising, uh, this was not terribly important, right? But what's happened in the last two or three years is automation has now made not just the bottom of the market addressable uh, through auction mechanics and real-time bidding, but that automation layer has been brought around also the direct buying and selling um, of inventory. So that exists today. And, um, and because of that, there now with automation is still uh, uh, more and more discussions about both unique media and unique data assets. Okay, and um, we just did this on, on each of the six points we're gonna talk to you about just to show you um, some of the big media owners across the world and how they're thinking of some of these, um, some of these items. So for instance, uh, you can see here, this is uh, uh, John Slade at the Financial Times and they've deployed a DMP, data management platform. They've attached it to the Rubicon Project 
um, platform, and then they bundle uh, both media and data assets together, um, and they'll do that both in terms of offering uh, prepackaged inventory to the advertiser, but also in response to the automated equivalent of an RFP. So the advertiser might have a particular need, and it's answered again not just by the piece of media, but by the unique data asset that's that's um, that's owned there. And um, what's interesting is this is moving very fast. So you know, one of the one of the questions if you're a media owner or dealing with them, you might ask is, uh, have you done um, a DMP? Uh, data management deployment, and have you attached it to a platform like Rubicon Project? Because if they have, then you can start to do some of the things that, uh, that I'm talking about. So like to give you an example of how quickly this is moving is uh, 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 the FT has done this. So we were just in London last week talking to some of our customers there. The FT has done this. The Guardian has been doing this for a, a long, long time. Um, uh, Hearst, their international division, is in the process of deploying a DMP in the next couple months. And then um, you have more emerging markets. And one of the interesting things that's happening in some of the emerging markets, and the example I could give you is Czechoslovakia, but you can see it in smaller markets around the world, is the development of cooperatives. So, um, so publishers are getting together, kind of pooling their inventory and telling a story both around inventory and unique data assets uh, to answer competition uh, from the, uh, the biggest companies in the world like Google, um, and, and, and Yahoo in those markets uh, to make that addressable. So uh, in, in the Czechoslovakian case I, I gave you, um, in the Czech market, um, they've just launched this uh, cooperative exchange and are, will be looking at adding a, adding a DMP. So uh, it's either kind of has happened or is in process. Um, the second thing to, um, to ask is, uh, are you doing pricing segmentation um, across channels as a media owner? And this, uh, I think in most worlds, would be maybe painfully obvious. Um, but again, remember, uh, most folks' experience in automation is through the auction market, through the bottom of the market. And again, it's changed now, right? So you have the auction piece, and you also have the order automation piece. And so, um, what you're seeing is tremendous organizational change, both in buying organizations, agencies, and in the media owners themselves, to figure out how to unify um, the approach in terms of, hey, how am I going to manage my channels? How am I going to segment all this? Um, what's going to be hand-sold directly? Um, what's going to be through an order automation uh, piece? So still premium, still leveraging unique media, still leveraging unique data assets, and what's going to be kind of towards the bottom uh, and really just take advantage of marketplace and auction mechanics. Okay, so this is another example. This is a division of USA Today uh, that, that manages some of their sports properties, and uh, you can see here that, that Chris has a strategy um, across, across all channels, right? Okay, the third area is, is the media owner engaged in direct order automation? Um, and if they're not, um, they are at this point behind the eight ball um, uh, and behind the rest of uh, the, the market. Um, this is a big area of expansion we've seen in the last couple years. And people are now using uh, trading systems like ours to put the equivalent of their media kit, of their editorial calendar, of their publishing schedule um, in effectively electronic packages uh, that then can clear in real time and can leverage um, the, type of, um, the type of assets we've been talking about, like unique pieces of media um, and unique pieces of data. So here are some examples from uh, what Viacom and, um, and uh, this is actually Tribune uh, company um, in Chicago uh, on the bottom. But unique media, and I think Lori's quote here is quite interesting, is there was a point in time where a lot of media sellers only saw automation and programmatic as relevant for their unsold 
and remnant inventory. And you can see here, um, you know, we've obviously made, uh, made believers of these folks where they're now looking at um, IAB rising star units, rich media, um, and, um, and then some of the first party advertising we talked about as an, with the FT um, as an example. And the other thing that happens with order automation is, um, is in addition to the programmatic piece, so in, in addition to this piece that most people seem to now understand that um, you're basically uh, doing um, uh, 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 high-scale computing trading of inventory on an impression level. In addition to that, um, what you're now seeing is a really elegant workflow uh, for both buyers and seller personas. So, the, so you know, people say, oh, well, who do you compete against? Who does Rubicon Project compete against? And we like to say we compete against um, a little bit of inertia. Uh, uh, phone calls, fax machines, emails, unstructured Excel documents and PowerPoints. Um, and that what you have here is an elegant way to, um, to do the part of your planning and then also your, your execution. And um, the direct order automation piece I'm talking about here, um, if anybody's curious, during Q&A, we can talk about individual markets and kind of where they are. But um, UK, very progressive. Uh, France, very progressive. The Nordics, uh, extra credit, very progressive. Um, Australia um, is the one market across APAC that's super progressive and the US market as well. And of all those, we'd probably call out maybe UK and France as being uh, a year ahead um, of the rest of the market. Um, and in fact, if you look at a market like France, you also see the phenomenon of that, uh, that uh, cooperative uh, uh, project that I talked about coming together in France. There's one called uh, Laplace uh, Media, where uh, a lot of the leading publishers have pooled their inventory together to present a, a, a powerful answer to some of the, uh, the biggest uh, digital companies there. OK, the fourth question to ask is, are you using transparency to your advantage? So um, again, there's some history here. Like, as a media owner, um, if you are, you have to stop hiding um, in automation. So again, Go back to the early days of automation when it was just the auction market and you had a lot of fear and loathing about what was going to happen. How is it going to impact um, uh, my, my pricing? Um, how is it going to impact my sellers if I'm a media owner? How does it impact the planning and buying mechanics if I'm running um, an agency? And so the way people um, initially kind of uh, got into things uh, very cautiously uh, was by uh, masking, uh, hiding behind a lot of this technology versus using the technology to show off kind of the very best and, um, and, and aggressively using platforms like, uh, like ours to manage their channels, to, to manage the direct and the indirect um, and whatnot. And, and what changed that allowed that to happen is if you look at the innovation of, of real-time bidding um, over the last five, six years, um, what you're able to do through a platform like ours, and these are insights that we actually give our media owner customers, is actually track the chain of custody of an individual ad from advertiser to agency to the trading desk to the piece of technology they might be using to deploy that ad into a marketplace like ours, and then on into the media owner. So is that going on to the Guardian, or to the FT, or to a Viacom property? Um, and for each of those, what, is the, what, is the, what does the pricing look like? And the media owner can control and say, hey, when I see Telefonica, um, when I see Vodafone, I want to see it through this channel. Maybe I don't want to see it through this channel. And all those are levers 
that, be, that can be controlled. And as buyers and sellers in the room, those are conversations you ought to have with one another, knowing that full well, all this can be kind of agreed upon, negotiated, and then, and then managed. And because as a media owner, you have over 100,000 advertiser brands here, you can see both the activity of that core group of advertisers that always will make or break your year, but you can also see the activity of the rest of the market, right? So you can see as every year you have a couple maybe leave from your core group and a couple come back in. Um, and so you can understand some of those marketplace mechanics that would otherwise be very hard for you to, to see. Okay, and there's just a little bit more from, from Rob. Uh, this is just uh, super, super important. Because, uh, again, we used to only be talking about the auction market and used to only be talking about remnant or unsold, a lot of automation historically um, was taken care of, was managed by the ad operations group uh, within the media owner, right? So it was really viewed as a back office type function. Um, and now, as the automation layer has been wrapped around the direct order automation, um, it's more and more become fully uh, ingrained um, into the revenue organization, right? So what you wanna know is, has the media owner um, aligned its sales compensation? Right? Because if those sellers, right, the guys that, the men and women who have traditionally hand sold, if they are not properly compensated for pieces that go through automation, I can tell you right now you're going to have a problem. And the final piece um, that you need to understand and think about is are you managing a unified marketplace? Um, one of the things that's happening on the buy side, on the agency side, is um, it, the same sort of thing is happening on the agency side. So the automation specialists on the agency side are more and more sitting with the more traditional trading directors in the operating agencies um, to negotiate uh, the entire trading deal, which now includes uh, automated access. Um, so. It's all about managing a unified marketplace. And I think more and more, um, there's, the conversation becomes unified. It becomes about the special, the custom content, the sponsorship. It becomes about the direct order automation. And that same discussion is even gonna include a conversation um, about the auction. And it's all about uh, making sure that we facilitate and deepen that, um, that trading relationship. And one way to think about it, I'm not gonna go through this, but is, um, is think of this reverse triangle. So what is your, how does automation uh, figure into your pricing segmentation um, and kind of go to market plan when you're a media owner? Um, and if, if you can't comfortably fill this out, um, you really need to be thinking about what you're doing because there are a lot of tools that you can, uh, you can leverage today. Okay, so those are the six. And, um, and I'll leave you with this quote from John Wren at, uh, at Omnicom, where he says he holds the long-term belief that all uh, traditional media, or a lot of traditional media, will get purchased through this, um, through this automated way. So agencies want to, again, negotiate that unique access, that special arrangement with the media owner for their client, right? Um, and they can only do that through an effective negotiation. So, um, so we look at the, um, at the automation as an enabler of those people. Now, that said, um, the people that push paper, that send faxes, right, that email back and forth today, that collate things by hand, um, they're in some trouble. And you need to re retrain and redeploy them, all, or, or you will have to find a different set uh, of folks. Like we, we like to say, hey, the 24-year-old, the 24-year-old media buyer um, is going to become a, a, a mathlete, you know, a math expert, where it's a, it's a different state today. Thank you so much for coming today.